Last year, Apple released Final Cut Pro for iPad, which I reviewed. And then this year, during the iPad event, they showcased us a newer version of Final Cut Pro for iPad called Final Cut Pro for iPad version 2. And that thing brings a couple of updates to Final Cut Pro being able to work on a project from an external drive, new titles, new effects, new backgrounds, and new soundtracks. But besides that, they announced two things that really excited me. One of them was the multicam recording. What that means is you set up your iPhones and iPads and you can use everything. You can use cameras from all of these devices and record directly into Final Cut for iPad and then edit it right there. And while you're editing, the full version of those files are being downloaded to the iPad. It seemed magical and it kind of seemed too good to be true. And with that, of course, to be able to use cameras from your other devices, they announced a new app called File Cut Camera. And the File Cut Camera app finally brings everything we wanted from the standard camera app. Those of, those of us who want professional controls. They are all here in this app now. And I'm going to start with the File Cut Camera app, and then we're gonna look at the multi-camera recording. This is the Final Cut Camera app, and as you can see, everything is under our hands. I love it so much. If you wanna change the recording format, it's here. You can switch between HEVC to Apple ProRes. You can change between HDR to SDR or Apple ProRes Log, and then we can switch between resolutions and then we can switch between the frame rates. Of course, if you want to go up to 60, you need the external storage, which we can connect here. As you can see, it shows it down here, it shows the name and then you can switch to 60 frames per second. Or if you want, you can easily switch to where you want to record. And here we can switch between lenses, but it's not pretending to switch between lenses. This is the Pro app. If you switch to 120 millimeters, it switches to the 120 millimeters. So it's up to you to consider its minimum focus distance or its pluses and minuses. It's something I wanted for so long. You can zoom in and out like this, but it doesn't switch between cameras. So you can zoom in in that camera, but if you want to zoom in and out in 24 millimeter, very much like Sony's Xperia camera app. Over here, we have our white balance and we can set our white balance to whatever we want, or we can go and select automatic or fixed, or it gives us a couple of presets. We can select those as well. And here we have the shutter speed and ISO, you can set this to auto, of course, but you can set this to manual. And finally, you can dial down the ISO to whatever you want. You can set your um, shutter speed to whatever you want. And if you go to 24 frames per second, you can actually go to 48 instead of 50, which is very, very nice. And next to it, we have our focus. Of course, you can have manual focus and auto focus. And next to that, we have the rotation lock. You can lock it this way, you can lock it that way, or you can set it to portrait, which is also vertical, or you can unlock it so it follows just like the regular camera app. Here you can switch to the front facing camera. You can start recording. Hello, how are we doing? Very good. And as you can see on the top, we are seeing the audio levels. And next to that, we have settings. And in the settings, we have our preferences. We can turn those on. We can turn the stabilization on. What that means is we can turn off the stabilization, which is fantastic. Of course, stabilization causes a little bit of crop. That's how it works. And then you can mirror the front camera if you like. And here we can turn on the grid. We can have some aspect ratio guide like that four by three and we have overexposure indicator and focus peaking uh, th this green is focus peaking by the way 
And if you want to see the overexposure, when I turn the ISO up, as you can see, these lights up there, they are showing us that they're overexposed. And over here, we have the connection to the live multicam that I'm about to show you. And here you can select to connect to your iPad. And when you record stuff, it gets recorded into itself. It doesn't go to your standard photo gallery, but if you want to save it, you can save the video. And if you want, you can transfer this to your Final Cut from here. And when you connect to the iPad, we get the connected to live multicam to record connected as angle one kind of information over here, which is very useful as well. Now let's look at this because I think you're going to love this. All right, let's begin. This is our Final Cut Pro for iPad screen. Now let's create a new project. What I want to do in this project is instead of format, I want to go to custom and I'm going to decide on what I want. I want 4K landscape. I want it in SDR in 24 frames per second and location is itself. I don't want to save this anywhere externally. And here I'm going to go to live multicam. And here, as you can see, I'm given the option to select the Final Cut cameras. So of course I'm going to select iPhone 15 Pro. I'm going to select iPhone 15 Pro Max. One thing though, you got to set the orientation like this. iPhone 14 Pro Max over there. Let's select that. By the way, you can install this to devices from A13 and up. That's why I brought in an iPhone 15, iPhone 11 Pro Max. Let's connect that as well. But as you can see, we left out iPad's own camera for this example, which is fine. So now we hit next and we select all of these stuff. Anyone can start recording. I think that's a really nice feature. So let's say you're your friends are, everyone is chiming in. You're doing this with your friends. You're using your friends' devices to create a multicam. If someone sees something interesting, they can start, they can hit record and it's going to get recorded here as well. I want to turn on the camera indicators so we see the recording time left and the battery level. Hit OK. Now I'm seeing all of the angles, right? This is perfect. There's a, there's a little bit of delay, but that's fine. But what I like to show you is where is iPhone 15 Pro Max? iPhone 15 Pro Max is here. What I want to do is I want to go to the settings. I actually want to go to ProRes, ProRes Log, 4K24, and then shutter and ISO is good. Autofocus, focus here. That is great. And then I want to select my own white balance value. And this is it. So this one is set. Now let's go to the overhead camera. And for this one, I want to select HLG. The reason I want to, I'm doing that is so I can I want to show you how it converts everything to SDR in the end. You don't have to worry about anything. iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let's switch that to HLG, HLG as well. Great, great. Looks great. Everything looks fantastic. And this guy, iPhone 11. What shall we do to you? We can I can switch between lenses. Is this good? You want to be like this, little friend? Huh? Or do you want to be ultra wide angle? I think I'm going to select this. And then, yeah, ISO and shutter speed is proper. This one cannot record in uh, HDR, so it's going to record in SDR. So everything seems to be set. So what I want to do is I want to film the unboxing of the goodies I got when I was at WWDC. And for this, I'm going to use my external mic. I'm going to hit record over here. 
this is going to re record internally and then we're going to I'm going to synchronize it afterwards and we hit record. Everything starts recording. Hello and welcome to another unboxing. I was recently at WWDC and they gave us the, a goodie bag. And in that goodie bag, there was this thing that I really wanted to show you. So without further ado, let's look at this box. Worldwide Developers Conference 2024. And let's open it up. Oh, what is that? Look at this. We got some pins. And I go and hit stop. And hit done. Transfer now. While the files are transferring, I can start editing this video. So what I can do is I can select the microphone I want to use. I want to use the microphone of iPhone 11. And I want to select that angle and hit play. Hello and welcome. Now, as you can see, I'm just selecting the proper angles. I feel like that's going to complement the video. And the video itself getting edited in that way. I can, of course, change this to whatever I want later on. But as I'm watching it, I'm editing the video as fast as watching it. And that's it. So now what I can do is I can go here to my soundtracks and just grab anything that I fancy. That's too much. That's good. I can put it here. Right? And when I go over there and just trim it, it readjusts the song. See you in the next video. And creates... Hello. A fade out and then I can go here adjust its volume I can bring it down to minus 30 hello and welcome to another that's it by the way everything is transferred the files are here so as you can see this angle was a little bit darker so I want to go add color adjustments and over here I'm gonna turn up the exposure a little bit and now they match so now I actually want to show you something else let's go over here to our multicam and remove one of the multicams maybe we should remove the iPhone 11 okay and I'm gonna add iPad now I want to show you this so this DJI mic can be connected via Bluetooth and when I go here I can go to my audio and as source I can select DJI mic 2 so now when I do another multicam recording I'm actually using this mic this can connect to your iPad wirelessly. You don't need the receiver, but for the iPhones, you still need the receiver to capture the audio from DJI Wireless Mic 2. This is the app. And while we're doing all of this, as you can see, it is downloading the files in the background. One thing we forgot to look is here, we also have the Pro Camera for iPad, which is great. If you want to include the iPad as your pro camera, it is very much like the pro camera we have for the iPhones. But of course, we, the things we can do with the iPad is very limited. But even though it is limited, it gives us the ProRes option for the front and back camera. FileCut camera requires iOS 17.4 or later. And if you want to use it on iPad, it requires 17.4 iPad OS 17.4 or later. And for focus peaking and overexposure indicators, do you have to have a 13 Bionic chip or later? And Final Cut Pro version 2 requires at least M1 chip or later and iPad OS 17.4 or later. It just works like magic. It is it is really good. I was I was thinking that I was gonna find, you know, some things to find workarounds 
But no, this thing really works. So now the question is, who is this for? Do you, do you, is this going to make you get Final Cut Pro for the iPad? I'm really excited about this. I really want to pay that one year rent for this app and see if I can get used to using this. But also there are so many other video editing apps that are really good on the iPad. I feel like if we're somewhere with friends, that's when this is going to come in very handy. But I'm curious what you think about Final Cut Pro version 2 for iPad and the Final Cut camera app. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. And until I see you the next one, take really good care of yourselves and hoish chakalun.